directors of Lycoming in MAC action. Good afternoon and welcome to Shirk Stadium. Steve Degler along with Bob McCool and Bob Lo the Lions starting out 4-0 in this season. Things couldn't have gone much better for them in the first month. Since then, they haven't won. They've dropped four in a row, and that basically means in the last two weeks of the schedule, they are in salvage mode. We're going to find out the mental toughness of this football team because their goals at the beginning of the season were, were much loftier than the, where, where they stand right now. Beginning of the season, they had aspirations of winning the MAC and making it into the postseason. Those goals obviously are no longer part of the equation. Now the goals become 23 seniors taking the field for the last time would like to win their final home game here at Shark Stadium coupled with the fact that more importantly they'd like to finish the season at six and four this Lycoming team is playing some good football it has won three straight games offensively nobody really stands out statistically but defensively they have been very good and they're led by a guy in the secondary named Tim Mahoney well his statistics are this 53 tackles leading the team three interceptions also leads the team and that's the job right now in today's football for a strong safety you have to be good against the run and you have to get yourself back into pass formation and also be a part of that and Tim Mahoney obviously has been able to do that so far for the Warriors as you mentioned 23 seniors for Albright playing their final home game it starts and it ends with their all-american quarterback John Port well his climb up the record charts continues as today stands he is now third all-time in NCAA Division three in terms of total passing yards for his career over 12,000 he can still climb up the career touchdown marks as well 104 coming into today's game. He is eighth right now. He could accelerate and get a little bit higher before his season is over with. But right now, the most important record in John Port's mind is not his individual numbers, but his team's 6-4 and four record. Well, last year, Albright finally beat Lycoming. First time after 24 straight losses. They hadn't won over the Warriors since the 1970s. It is a beautiful afternoon in Reading today. The Lions try and make it two in a row over Lycoming. We'll have the opening kickoff from Shirk Stadium in just a moment. Back at Shirk Stadium in Reading, Pennsylvania, Steve Degler along with Bob McCool. Final home game for Albright on an absolutely perfect November afternoon. No rain for an Albright home game today. <laughs> the sun is here to stay. No humidity, 70 degrees at kickoff. The head coach is a legend for Lycoming. He's also the AD. Frank Girardi closing in on a milestone, looking for his 250th win before this season is over. And he has run a great program up in Williamsport for the Warriors, a perennial contender for the national title for many years in Division Three. On the home sideline, EJ Sandusky's team trying to snap a four-game losing streak. He is 47 and 43 in his ninth season at the helm of the Lions. Last year, Albright spotted Lycoming a 16-point lead early in that game and then roared back for a big victory, 49-32. First win over the Warriors since 1978. Lycoming had won 24 in a row and still leads 29-14. There have been two ties in this series as well. And one of the keys for Albright this year, Bob, has been play in the first quarter. They have been coming out of the gates very slowly all season long. They have deferred their choice to the second half after winning the coin toss, and Tom Fitzpatrick will kick off putting the Albright defense on the field first. And it's, it's kind of a couple of things, really. We've talked about this in the open, that the Lycoming Warriors offensively have not exactly been a juggernaut. Their defense really has set the tone. Perhaps that's part of the strategy for the Lions is th it thinking that Let's see if our defense can shut down their offense and give our offense some good field position to work with. And of course, you're putting the pressure on your defense to get the job done right out of the chute. Rick Shikitano to the left is back deep for Lycoming along with Nate Hanner, number 41. The Warriors in their white jerseys moving from right to left here in the first quarter. Tom Fitzpatrick, one of those 23 seniors, has it teed up and we are underway at Shirk Stadium. This will be Shikitano at his own nine yard line. Shikitano trying the center of the field. He'll get across the 25 to the 27 yard line where he is brought down by Steve Merlini, a freshman from Abington, Pennsylvania. An 18 yard return and here come the Warriors on offense. Quarterback is Glenn Smith. He is a six foot junior from Warrior Run High School. Seven interceptions, six touchdowns on the season, throwing for just under 1,000 yards so far this year. This is a Warrior offense that is very, very balanced. They'll come out with three receivers in the set on first and 10 from the Lycoming 27-yard line. Play action on first down. 
throwing short and complete across the 30-yard line to Tim Brown. That is his favorite receiver who makes his 30th catch of the season. It's a gain of six on the play. Here is the rest of the offense. Lackey, the tailback, has some great speed. Mangold, the fullback. This saw Brown with the catch. Up front, Murphy, Knight, Williams, Coyne, and Schreck do a very nice job. It's a team that E.J. Sandusky says is running the ball much better this season. It is second down and four. We take a look at Chris Weissel, a local product from Schuylkill Valley High School here in Berks County. Jim Lackey out of North Penn gets the carry on second down. Lackey will pick up maybe a yard to the 29. It's going to be third and about three and a half for the Warriors. And the Albright defense trying to make a stance. Weiser, Chikamaro, Schmininger, and Gill across the front. Sadiq, Manati, and Pond, a good core of linebackers. Josh Benson, Josh Johnson, Steve Butler, and Matt Christ in the secondary for the Lions. Minotti, the first one to get through and slow down Lackey just a little bit before the rest of the defense can come up and make the hit, led by freshman Dave Schmidiger as Lackey gets a yard and that's it. There's Minotti, who two weeks ago here against FDU Florham had a career high 20 tackles. Lackey with speed trying to get to the outside, eludes Sadiq and he'll have the first down at the 39 yard line. Needed three got four and they'll move the chains for the Warriors and credit the speed of Lackey for getting that first down for Lycoming it was a foot race to the sideline and Lackey's gonna win the foot race here it is it's a simple toss sweep to try to get him around the corner and Sadiq just can't quite get him and then finally Josh John Josh Benson is able to bump him out of bounds but it was the foot speed of Lackey that beat Muhammad Sadiq to get him the first down and there you see the numbers so far in the season Lackey, 244 yards, second on the team in rushing yards behind Brandon Trout. Just a freshman out of North Penn. Here is a throw short by Smith. Quick drop, and Brown well covered by Butler. Brown looking for a flag, none coming. It'll be second down and 10. As Steve said, this is a very nondescript offense. And you take a look at their individual numbers, there's nobody that jumps off the page at you as you see the good coverage by the Lions, Steve Butler, the strong safety who leads them in tackles throughout the season. And another one of the seniors playing his final game here this afternoon and immediately getting into the passing lane and not allowing Tim Brown a clear path to make the catch. Brown in motion with Lackey the lone setback. Lackey gets the carry. Butler and Minotti will make the tackle at the 45 yard line. A pickup of six brings up a third and four for the Warriors. Mike Chikamaro got through initially and just couldn't get the arm tackle on him. As you see, Lackey comes through and Chikamaro reaches out, can't quite get him, and then Minotti stuffing things up as the good middle linebacker is one to do and wrapping him up after the 45, but Lackey with that good foot speed hits the hole in a hurry. Matt Christ in coverage for the Lions here on a third down and four out of the shotgun for Smith. Sadiq bringing the pressure, and the throw for Beisel is a little out of reach. Beisel would have had enough for the first down at midfield, but he could not hang on. Covered very nicely on the play by Josh Johnson. It's fourth down and four. And the pass a little bit too far out in front of Beisel to make the catch. All he could do is kind of stick a hand out there, but as Steve said, the coverage was right there by Johnson, and there you see Beisel. All he can really do is just kind of stick a hand out there and hope for a miracle catch, and there's the coverage by Josh Johnson to make sure the pass is incomplete. Naoki Kuramoto is back deep to receive the punt of Tim Eskridge, averaging 34 yards a kick. End over end is going to bounce inside the 10 yard line and Lycoming will pin all bright deep right around the four yard line. Great job by Tim Eskridge, the senior from Havertown, Pennsylvania. Great job indeed. So Albright got what they wanted in the sense that they, sh their defense shut down Lycoming right out of the gate and stood to get fairly good field position, but the punter changes all that with about a 50-yard punt. John Port's season over 2,300 yards, 19 touchdowns. He has completed 195 of 335 passes. He has a long field here after a 51-yard punt by Eskridge. Pins Albright back at the four-yard line. Three receivers set for the Lions. Vinny Andrews is the lone running back. And Port on first down from his own end zone, throws the out for help that is incomplete through his hands. Brian was open on the play, but could not hold it in. Reeland Wood out of Hamburg High School on coverage. 
Second down and 10 for this offense. Andrews, the setback, Haupt, AC, Cerise, and Beach are the receivers. Up front, Holscher, Laco, Wilgucky, Morrissey, and Nebel, the offensive line for Albright. Lions will go out of the eye on second down and 10 with Drew Schiller getting the carry and Schiller fighting for a yard to the five. It's going to bring up a third down and nine for Albright. And this Lycoming defense has been playing very well. Harding, Davis, Kozak, and Rupp across the front. Lesage, Sterling in the middle, a great, great linebacker. Silenuk is the other backer. Wood, Murdoch, Mahoney, and Repko in the secondary in that 4-3 for the Warriors. Albright trying to convert a third and nine, putting AC in motion. Port under some pressure, dumps it off, short to Andrews. Andrews will only get back to the line of scrimmage. Nice play by that Lycoming defense. Greg Silenuk, the linebacker, a senior from Philadelphia, makes the stop for no gain. It's fourth and nine. And a very dangerous play and pass that time by the Lions, but Port was kind of forced into it because he couldn't find an open receiver downfield. John Port's going to drop straight back, looking to go deep, nothing there, so he just dumps it off, and look where Andrews makes the catch. He originally caught that football right at the goal line and was able to run off six yards to get back to the line of scrimmage, but that was forced by the good coverage downfield by the Warrior secondary. Matt Murdoch back to receive the punt of Nick Brightville, and it's going to be a fair catch at the 35 of the Lions. Great field position. Whenever you use it, remember, with wireless, safety is your call. Each team with a possession thus far. 11-11 to play in the opening quarter. Lycoming and Albright, no score, but in the exchange of field position, Lycoming the winner. After the Albright punt, the Warriors have it first and 10 at the Lions 35-yard line. And right now, this game has swung completely on the foot of Lycoming punter Tim Esker. His booming 50-yard punt backing Albright deep, and the Lions not able to pick up a first down, and Lycoming already knocking on the door for their first play at the 35 yard line. Spreading the field this time, quarterback draw for Glenn Smith. This is the play that Albright had trouble defending a couple of weeks ago against FDU Florham, and Smith able to get inside the 30 to the 28. He'll pick up seven. John Pond in on the tackle. It's a second down and three for the Warriors. Glenn Smith has some similarities for anybody who watched that game between Albright and FDU Florham. He has some similarities between the style of quarterback of Dan Huff of FDU Florham. He doesn't do anything spectacular, but he does do a lot of different things between running with the football and getting the football in a lot of different people's hands. And with that quarterback draw, picking up seven yards, has them inside the 30 at the 29-yard line. Blackie on second down and three, diving close to the first down at the 25. Looks like he's going to be just a little bit shy. It is going to be third and short for the Warriors. Sadiq and Chris coming up to make the tackle and stopping him at least momentarily from picking up the first down, it appears as Lackey's very quick to the line of scrimmage. Good acceleration by Jim Lackey. And there comes Sadiq up to trip him up and deny him the first down spot. This would be huge for Albright defensively if they can stop this first down right now. Of course, in this particular spot in the field, you would assume that Lycoming would be in four down territory. Lackey out of that great North Penn program in the Suburban One League National Division. First down carry for the fullback, Matt Mangold. His first attempt, the senior out of Marlton, New Jersey, will give Lycoming a first and 10 at the Albright 22-yard line. On third and inches, he gets three, almost four yards on the pickup. And Mangold, the fullback, in the short yardage situation, you're going to think of one or two things, either quarterback snake or the fullback. And look at the big hole he's got to run through over the left side of the offensive line before Sadiq can come up and make yet another tackle. But good blocking by Murphy, 72, the left tackle, and Chris Knipe, the left guard, number 78. Work out of the eye this time with Mangold staying in as the fullback. Sadiq showing blitz. He was offside on the play. Free play for Smith. Minotti has the tackle at the 32-yard line, but it's going to be first and five as the Lions clearly jump before the snap. Minotti getting through on the blitz, but the Lions obviously showing blitz and a little bit too anxious to get across the line of scrimmage. Our referee today is Gregory Allen, the umpire Bruce Campbell, Joe Cook, the head linesman, Rich Lutz is the line judge, back judge Kerry Ripley, Brad Hernizzi the field judge, and Doug Donnelly is the side judge. The crew 
signed by the Mac this afternoon. And All they do whistle. On the defense, number six, five yard penalty. Repeat checking now. Do whistle the Lions for five. It is first down and five for the Warriors, and that cannot make Albright head coach EJ Sandusky very happy. He has seen a multitude of mistakes, especially early in games here at home this season. And penalties have continued to, to shoot this foot, this team in the foot time and time again. It's not something you should still be doing this late in the season. So now a first down and five at the 17 yard line. The give is to Lackey. Lackey gets hit hard, but is able to move the pile forward. Chicamero making the stop at the 15 yard line. It's second down and a long two. Brian Weiser also in there helping to clog things up. Defensive in for the Lions and it's doing a very good job to getting to Lackey before he can get up ahead of steam at the line of scrimmage and wrapping him up right at the 15 yard line. So second down and about two to pick up the first. Well, neither of these teams has been an offensive juggernaut in the first quarter. They have combined to score 34 points in the opening quarters this year, 20 of them for Lycoming. Warriors pushing here and Lackey gets absolutely pasted by Minotti for a loss of a yard to the 16. It's going to be a third down and three. What a hit by Minotti. It's not been a spectacular season for Pete Minotti over the course of the year, but that's the kind of play that the Lions have been expecting from Pete Minotti all season long. Got through clear. Watch him. There he is, 35. Nobody touches him until Jim Lackey goes backwards. A great job by Minotti to shoot the gap, see where it's going, and make the hit. There you see him, 6'1", 210-pound senior out of Havertown, making the big stick, and the leader of the defense for the Lions comes up with a big play right there. Second leading tackler behind Butler. It is a third down. Here is Smith keeping it, keeping hold, touchdown. Albright again beaten by the quarterback on the ground as Glenn Smith in for his sixth rushing touchdown of the season. It'll be from 16 yards out. And you want to talk about misdirection, this play We'll see the replay of it in a little bit, but the replay will show you what misdirection is all about. That's just a great play fake by Glenn Smith. Got the defense for the Lions going one way, and he had the ball and running the other way, and it walked into the end. You'll know the terror of having a child who was kidnapped, but now we have wonderful technology to aid in this battle. It's called the Amber Alert. It's an early notification system to the public when every second counts. Amber Alert is a partnership. We want to thank you, the public, broadcasters, transportation, and law enforcement. Amber Alert really works. 7-0 Lycoming, 7.37 to play in the first quarter. Steven Dio will kick off for the Warriors. Two men back deep for Albright, including Naoki Kuramoto, who will be on the left side. Raymond Keschel also back deep for the Lions. Line drive kick. This will be Kuramoto bouncing it to Keschel at the 15-yard line. Keschel gets 10 to the 25. It's first and 10 there for Albright as we go back to the touchdown run by quarterback Glenn Smith. And we'll see this play from a couple different angles. The play fake to Lackey is what makes it happen, and then Glenn Smith can just walk in without being touched from 16 yards out for, for the touchdown. But here's the shot to show you. Watch the defense for Albright, all going to their left, and Glenn Smith is going to their right. And the play fake again to Lackey. Gets the defense going in one direction, and then Glenn Smith just puts it under his hip and takes it in. Six plays, 35 yards. It took him to get there, and Glenn Smith from 16 yards out has Mike Combing on top first. All set up by the 51-yard punt by Tim Eskray. So Albright's second possession, and John Ford misfires, overthrowing Stephen Acey. It'll be second down and 10 for the Lions at their own 26-yard line. Hands on the hip. The frustration of John Port as AC was open and Port threw that way over his head. Well, E.J. Sandusky has seen this before, and to his credit, his expression almost never changes on that sideline. But it has been frustrating here at home where the Lions are just 1-2, and two, and the win was a miracle. Here is a throw through the hands of Haupt. He has dropped two today, third down and 10. This is a pretty good indication of the problems that have got this Albright team on a four-game losing streak right now. It's fundamentals, throwing the football, hitting wide open receivers, wide open receivers, dropping passes. That's what's going to get you a four-game losing streak. And out was wide open in that play. They could have gotten about seven or eight yards, and instead it's now third and ten. Three receivers to the right, two to the left for Port in an empty backfield. Three-man rush, Port looking, great protection, and overthrows McCauley, his tight end. So. 
a very empty series for the Albright College Lions, and they will have to punt it away again. Good, good coverage by Jim Smith, as McCauley was the intended target, and Jim Smith was right with him, stride for stride, and Port probably wisely throwing that one incomplete. And you see AC trying to shake loose of the coverage, and he's open momentarily, but there's the linebacker, the middle linebacker Sterling helping out, and here's the one-on-one -on -one with McCauley and Smith, and right with him, stride for stride, and where's John Port gonna go? and wisely just throws it over his head incomplete. Let's wait and see what happens on the next series. Second kick for Nick Brightville. First one was 30 yards. This one is short as well. It's going to take a bit of an Albright roll, and the Lions will down it at the Lycoming 46-yard line with 7.04 to play. 7-0 Warriors and 33 seconds of clock time after scoring. The Warriors offense is right back onto the field after those three incompletions. The Lions not using a whole lot of time when you're going to throw three straight, not only a three three plays and done, but when it's three straight incompletions, you're stopping the clock with each one of them. And there is the longtime head coach of the Lycoming Warriors, Frank Girardi, in his 34th season. Girardi at 248 wins and counting. And he has done a marvelous job with this program. This has been one of the top programs in the MAC for a long, long time. First and 10 for Smith. Little roll to the right, throwing on the run, incomplete. Good coverage by Josh Benson, the intended target, Jeremy Ebert, the junior wide receiver from Honesdale High School at second down and 10. Well, it's not been a stellar start of this football game for either team's passing attack. Smith is one for four throwing the football with three straight incompletions. Port one for four as well, and his completion was for no gain. One thing we know, cannot blame it on the weather today. No, that's for sure. Last two home games, it has been very wet here at Shark Stadium. Albright dropping those contests to Widener and FDU Florham. Today, the last of our four telecasts of Albright football for 2005. Lackey on the toss sweep left on second down, and he gets buried by Steve Butler. There is a flag on the play thrown on the far side. It's a loss of two as it stands right now. Quite sure, based on where that, that penalty flag is, what this call may be. It's on the opposite side of the field and about four or five yards downfield, unless it's going to be a defensive hold against Albright. Lions offside. That will negate a two-yard loss instead of third and 12, second down and five. Those are the mistakes. Offsides, number 47 of the defense, five-yard five penalty. Five so instead of a positive gain in terms of what your defense is able to do, with Butler making the big play and dropping Lackey in the backfield, it's a reversal of about seven yards of, of field position. Instead of and saving a down as well. So it's first and five instead of second and 12. The ball moved into Albright territory now for the Warriors at the Lions 49 yard line. I correct myself, it's second and five as opposed to third and 12. Butler made a big play, but it does not count. Mangold, the fullback. Gild out of hold, and so did Minotti. Mangold able to bounce forward for a yard to the 48-yard line. It's third down and three for Lycoming. Lycoming has been a storied program, and we asked E.J. Sandusky as we take a look at this play by Mangold trying to bounce it to the outside, and Minotti another hit as well. And he said it's really nothing that Lycoming has done poorly. It's just that they basically raised the bar in the MAC, forcing other programs to catch up, and they have. That's exactly right. They, they won a lot of close games over the course of, of their time, and they were very confident they could win it. And all of a sudden, you lose a couple of close games, and that confidence reverses itself a little bit. Here's a short throw, and it is complete to Ebert on a quick stop pattern. And Ebert has a first down to the Albright 32-yard line, a pickup of 16 on the play. Just to finish that thought about this Lycoming team, I think this season really sums it up as Smith hitting a, just a quick little stop pattern as Ebert makes the catch, rumbling for against the run, but Lycoming has just hit that big play when they needed it to pick up the first down, and that pass play to Ebert, the big one so far in this drive. Well, Lycoming has had the bulk of possession time here in the first half and chewing up yardage, Albright's offense with just one yard in two drives, like homing with 72 thus far. Mangold is the lone setback this time, and he will get the carry, driving forward to the 25 down to the 24 yard line. A third down and two upcoming for the Warriors. Chickamara hit him at the line of scrimmage, but give Mangold credit for pushing and driving him backward. Mangold a load at 5'10", and 220 pounds, and 
He met head on with Chicken Marrow at the line of scrimmage and just pushes him backwards. Let's see it all come right there. There's the hit right away by Chicken Marrow at the line of scrimmage. But Mangold, a good fullback, just keeps driving his legs and driving his legs and ultimately wins the tug of war at the line of scrimmage and turns what could have been no gain into about a three yard pickup. And timeout will be called by Glenn Smith before this third down and two play. We'll step aside as well. 4.05 left in the first quarter at Shirk Stadium. Lycoming leading Albright. It's 7 0 Warriors. Afternoon in Reading. The foilage right there where you want it to be in the autumn. Right now, Albright looking for a prettier picture here. Down 7 0, missing tackles in Jim Lackey. Shedding the Lions like they're falling leaves. Takes it inside the 15 to the 14. It's first and 10 for the Warriors. Fifth first down so far in this first half for Lycoming. And credit Lackey for that one. He made a couple of people miss. Sadiq had a shot at him, couldn't wrap him up. And I believe it was Butler who also had a shot at him and couldn't wrap him up. And Lackey ends up turning it into a first down pickup inside the 15 down to the 14. Jim Lackey, a freshman, has had a good first quarter. 5'9", 170 pounds, North Wales, Pennsylvania. Not everybody moved when the ball was snapped. Lackey takes the handoff. John Pond will make the tackle as Lackey gets a pair to the 12. Second down and eight on a strange play for the Warriors. It looked like the line of scrimmage and the, and the bodies lined up in the line of scrimmage thought there was going to be a, a whistle and a penalty. The ball snapped and everybody kind of hesitated for a minute. It looked like the offensive line for Lycoming was not expecting the snap count at the same time that the center snapped the football. He was on two, and they were on three. He somehow got two yards out of it. Under three and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Albright really needs a stop here. Already down seven, nothing. Quick count, Smith rolling, and Roland has him for a sack back at the 23-yard line. But James Roland has made an impact since his switch from linebacker to defensive end, and they did it simply to get him on the field a little bit more. He was the backup behind middle linebacker Pete Minotti, and that position doesn't call for a whole lot of playing time because Minotti's out there for an awful lot. So they move Roland up to the defensive end spot, and nobody touches him. Absolutely a blown assignment at the line of scrimmage for Lycoming. And Roland goes in untouched and would not let Smith get away. Second sack for the junior linebacker from that great Strathaven program down in Delaware County. It's a loss of 12 back to the 24-yard line. Third down and 20 for Smith out of the gun. Throwing, and it is intercepted by Josh Johnson. The Lions minus six in turnovers get a huge one right there, and Johnson returns it to the Albright 11-yard line. Well, that was all about timing, and Johnson timed it perfectly, stepping in the way of the football. It looked as if the receiver was open momentarily, but watch Johnson on the right-hand side of your picture. Just steps in front, right inside the passing lane, perfectly timed by Josh Johnson and it gets the interception and the Lion defense comes up with the big stand as Johnson steps right in the passing lane and takes it away from Ebert. Eighth interception thrown by Smith. It's the fourth pick this year for Josh Johnson out of Northwestern Lehigh. Now Port needs to get the offense going. One yard and two drives and they'll put it on the ground with Vinnie Andrews. Andrews, a tough runner, bouncing his way across the 15 to the 16 yard line. He'll get about five on the play. Tough running in between the tackles by Vinny Andrews to come up with the, what looked to be a no gain, turns into about a five or six yard pickup and gives the Lions a little bit of real estate for John Port to work with, Some, something behind him besides the goalpost. Under two minutes to play in the first quarter. Port will again put him on the ground. Drew Schiller this time with a flag on the play. That's gonna be, I think, a face mask penalty coming up against Lycoming. Maybe not, based on the reaction of the Defensive linemen for Lycoming, they're clapping and pointing in the opposite direction, so maybe it's going to be penalty number three against the Lions, but the, the penalty flag came in after the tackle, so I assumed it was probably going to be something on the tackle on a face mask penalty based on where the penalty flag was thrown. Initial indication from Gregory Allen is it's Half against Albright. This might be a personal foul penalty. Holding on the offense, number 77, after this is at the goal line, repeat second down. So the Lions with another penalty will push them back inside the 10 to the 8. It's a second down and 13 for E.J. Sandusky's offense. The Lions will go with two in the backfield, offset eye. 
Andrews and Schiller. Port, good protection, throwing short for Andrews. Incomplete at the 15 yard line, Kevin Lesage. The senior from Monsignor Bonner High School in the Philadelphia Catholic League with coverage. It is third down and 13. Well, the outside linebackers for Lycoming rely on speed and quickness. They're not very big. Lesage is just 180 pounds. The, on the other side is Greg Silenock, and he also is only about 180 pounds. But they're very quick, and they get into pass coverage, and, and Lesage right there with Andrews to make sure that pass is incomplete. Lions need to get to the 21-yard line. Port to work out of the shotgun. Five receivers set. Port hit as he throws. No whistle, and now finally a whistle comes in, and it's going to be called an incomplete pass by Gregory Allen. That could have been the strangest completion in the history of John Port if that was not whistle dead. It was a late whistle, and here we'll see. Port gets hit, and he tries to throw the football. As he's going down, he releases the football, and the whistle was late in coming, and it just kind of rolled forward for about 25 yards before Brian Howe picked it up, but then the whistle came in, and so they'll rule it as an incomplete pass, and give Port credit for that to make sure he didn't get sacked and got rid of the football, and it is an incomplete pass, the fourth straight now for John Port. Tim Harding with the pressure, Nick Brightville his third punt. Murdoch is back deep, and he is sent back to midfield. He touched that football and then picks it up at his own 40-yard line, and Murdoch, who nearly lost the football for Lycoming, will get it back near midfield where Rich Sabara, number 49, a junior from Belmar, New Jersey, makes the tackle. Well, you can throw, if there's a textbook of football, you can burn it after what's been going on out here in the first quarter. Everybody's getting a chance to do something wrong so far for the first 14 minutes of this first quarter. As Lycoming really missed a golden opportunity that time, and in some ways, so did the Lions with Murdoch bouncing that football backwards, trying to field that punt over his shoulder. The Lions with an opportunity to pin them a little bit deeper, and it said Murdoch at least able to take it up to the 49 yards line line, yard line. So all said and done, like Comey still gets pretty good field position. Smith on play action, sacked by Michael Bowles at the 40 yard line. Bowles, the basketball player, back on the defensive side of the football, comes up with the sack and a loss of nine in the play. So the two guys who switched to the defensive line spot are the two guys that come up with a sack. First it was Roland who switched from middle linebacker to defensive end, and now Bowles who switched from tight end to defensive tackle gets through virtually untouched and barrels his way forward and wraps up Smith for another 10-yard loss back inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. That is only the 12th sack by Albright this year. Bowles, the tight end and the defensive tackle getting it, and it's the 25th sack of a Lycoming quarterback on the delay. Lackey gets the carry. James Rowland makes the tackle at the 45 after a gain of five. That could be the final play of the opening quarter. It'll be third down and 14 for the Warriors. So the Lion defense has responded so far to the challenge. The offense for the Lions leaving a lot to be desired through the first quarter of play. But the defense, after giving up that touchdown the last two series, has responded and is trying to get the momentum back. Lycoming will let the first quarter clock run out here at Shirk Stadium in Reading, Pennsylvania. After 15 minutes in this MAC contest, it is the Warriors of Lycoming leading it 7-0 over Albright. We are back with the second quarter right after these messages. Oh, I feel like I've told you so much about me. What about you? What do you do all day? I like to go rollerblading in the park for hours. Is that something? Smith is picked up by Christ. Second interception for the Albright secondary today. Chris falls down at the 38-yard line, getting his second pick of the season. So back-to-back -back interceptions, in essence, in terms of Glenn Smith's passing attempts. First it was Benson, and now it's Chris, the free safety who makes the catch. And this ball is just thrown too high by Smith, well over the head of Tim Brown. And a free safety is supposed to be back there playing center field. And that's exactly where Chris is at. Look at him right there, right in the middle of the field, playing center field, and jumps high, makes the catch, and the interception. So again, the Lion defense coming up with a great stand. And now, somehow, some way, the Lion offense has to get it in gear. A three series so far. How about a total of six yards of offense for the Lions? Here is Vinny Andrews on first down. He'll get three to the 41, second down and seven. Tackle made by Mike Kozak, senior from Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. 
John Fort one for seven in the first quarter. A couple of drops in there, a couple balls well overthrown as well. It's, it's been a team effort, to say the least. To play as badly as they've done through the first quarter, it's, it's, it's not one guy, it's a, it's a group effort. Andrews again, tough yardage off the right side. He'll get a yard to the 42. Third down and six as the Lions look for their initial first down of the game. I'd like to welcome those of you who have tuned in on the web today. Listening to our broadcast at WTBE.com or at Albright.edu. We welcome you to Shirk Stadium in Reading, Pennsylvania. 7-0 Warriors with the lead over the Lions early in the second quarter. Port, good protection, nobody open. Port not an adept runner and he will not get the first down. John Fort simply finding nobody open downfield. And Albright will have to punt it away again. We're going to take a look at the coverage downfield by Lycoming that forces John Fort to have to run with the football. AC and Allen were the two intended targets. But right there with them is the coverage. And LeSage does a great job of sh shedding off the guy he's defending, which is Stephen AC, and then getting himself in a position to tackle John Fort. Great job. We mentioned that LeSage. Not a big outside linebacker, 180 pounds. He's really almost like a def another quarterback out there. Nick Brightville with the punt on the return for Lycoming is Nate Hanner. He is tackled immediately at the 22-yard line. 13-12 to play in the first half at Shirk Stadium in Reading. Still Lycoming 7, Albright nothing. There are many kinds of heroes. Some are celebrated, and some, like the Shriners, are less well-known. I see them in the parade and I get a lump in my throat. And I feel like saluting the entire... Earth. Gets it done, starting with the center, number 65, Jim Williams, and also his pullback, Matt Mangold, getting the job done for the Warriors. And you'll see it right here, right up the middle. There's Williams, who pulls out the center, trap blocking by the left guard as well, and the lead block of Mangold is fullback, and a lot of daylight for Williams, to, or, excuse me, for Lackey to run through for the first down pickup. Mark his knee down at the 37-yard line. Here is Mangold on the carry. Butler and Minotti combined for the tackle. Just across the 40-yard line, a pickup of four. It'll be second down and six for the Warriors. Keep the defense honest, not just a steady diet of Lackey. But they get the fullback Mangold involved as well. You see Mangold, that's his fourth carry of the afternoon for 12 total yards. But Lackey, in the meantime, is approaching the 50-yard mark with 11 carries. Throw in the running abilities of Glenn Smith, who's run for the only touchdown of the game. And the balanced attack for Lycoming. One of the things that concerned the Lions coming in is how well Smith runs this balanced attack at quarterback. And He's thrown two interceptions today. Albright has not been able to take advantage. Here is Lackey again, short gain of a yard to the 42-yard line. Third down and five coming up. Sadiq and Pond with the stop for the Lions. And let's throw this into the mix. That, In addition to what we've talked about with Lackey and Mangold and Smith, the leading carrier on the season for Lycoming, Brandon Trowell, has yet to see any playing time. And he actually leads them in, in rushing attempts and rushing yards coming into this football game. Slot to the left, Lackey the single setback here. Third down and five. Smith with a short drop, throws for Chris Weissel, and he has the first down at the 48-yard line, a pickup of six on the play. Josh Johnson makes the stop, but a good route run by the Schuylkill Valley grad and a fine throw by Glenn Smith. And through it where only Weissel could catch it, and a great job by Weissel to get down and get the football. Just a little slant pattern to get that first down, and Weissel makes the catch and gets down and gets the first down. Before, ben, excuse me, before Johnson can wrap him up, but a first down pickup to the 48-yard line. 24th catch of the year for the junior from Leesport. First and 10 for the Warriors at their own 48-yard line. Slot each way. The delay is to Lackey. Lackey will not get anything. Chicamaro in on the stop for Albright. The delay did not fool the Lions in this particular case as they were waiting for Lackey Looking like you want to pass the football, and then just a, a little draw play. And Chickamaro gets that arm in there, and then Manati comes along and finishes him off. Chickamaro has had a good, strong start to this football game and has hands in on a lot of tackles. Sophomore from Cheltenham High School. No gain on the play. It's second down and 10. Just over 10 minutes left in the first half. Lycoming leading at 7 0. 
Smith throwing short and Minotti jumping the route, able to knock it away. Good job by the linebacker stepping in front of Bill Margadich, the tight end out of Interboro High School. It's third down and 10. Well, Pete Minotti certainly made his presence felt in this football game, and let's watch it from behind Glenn Smith and watch what he's seeing. He's right now gonna see an open receiver in Margatich, and that quickly, Minotti just jumps in front and knocks it away. Not looking for the pick, just making sure the completion does not happen. And it'll bring up third down and 10. What a difference, like Foaming converting 67% on the afternoon. Albright, 0 for 4. Delayed blitz, the throw is complete to Jeremy Ebert, and Ebert is smothered immediately. That is good pursuit by the Lions, Butler and Benson in there, and it's fourth down for the Warriors. Well, that's simply a matter of we'll give you some yards, but we'll not give you the first down. And Smith had to dump it off short to Ebert. He was facing a heavy rush. So you're gonna see Minotti coming in in a blitz up the middle, and Smith need, knows he needs to get rid of the football and dump it off short. And Sadiq and Johnson come up and make sure, excuse me, Benson and Sadiq come up to make sure that Eber cannot turn into a first down pickup. First punt by Eskridge was a 51 yarder that pinned Albright deep. He kicks this one away from Kuramoto. It rolls out of bounds at the 20 yard line. And Albright will take over first and 10 with 9.33 to play in the first half. The Lions continue to start with bad field position and obviously their offense yet to get on track does not help things, but their defense, the exception of the one series, in which Lycoming was able to take it in for a touchdown, starting from their, the, from the Albright 35 yard line. Other than that, the defense for Albright has been stellar. Ford has completed one pass to this point for no yards, and he gets Brian Hopped, his senior, makes the catch in front of Reeland Wood out to the 28 yard line, a pickup of eight, biggest play of the day for Albright at second down and two. And what a great catch by Brian Howell. He made this catch running backwards and, and hauls it in. There you see he's running backwards and still gets those hands up there to make the catch good for about an eight yard pickup. His team leading 45th reception of the season. The give is to Andrews and the chains will move and they'll move quite a bit as Andrews across the 45 out to midfield. Vinny Andrews bursting 22 yards before Matt Murdoch makes the tackle. Well, obviously that's the biggest gain of the day by a long shot. That's about quadrupled Albright's offense so far. Great blocking up front. Good job of sealing it off. And it starts with Steve Laco, the left guard, who gets the job done. Andrews following his block with a lot of daylight and takes it out to midfield for about a 22-yard pickup. Good block by Haup downfield on Greenland Wood as well. Here is Andrews again, tackled again by Murdoch inside the 45-yard line. So the Lions getting the offense going on the ground here. Call that a gain of six at second down and four for the junior from Lee Heighton. Another fine effort. And Andrews has become such a vital cog in this offense, not only as a runner, but as a pass receiver out of the backfield. Back on the horse again, this time a very short gain for Andrews as Mike Kozak makes the tackle. Pickup of two to the 42-yard line. It is third down and two for Albright. Just over eight minutes left in the first half. Albright down 7-0. Finally getting some offense going for the first time today. Backs in the eye with Schiller the tailback and who will get the carry off the right side. Lunging forward, it is going to be close from the spot on the far side of the field. He is going to be maybe the length of the football shot. Now the Lions are looking to try to get some daylight up the middle and we'll wait and see on the spot whether or not Schiller was able to pick it up. The Lions certainly think so. If not, they're gonna go for it on fourth down. Albright is not happy with the spot of this football, feeling that Schiller got to the 40, but he is marked down just shy. The Lion, the Lion offense wants to go for it. Right now they're waiting to see. They want. I think they're. I think EJ Sandusky wants them to measure to see how much they've got to go to pick it up. And I think the Lions are going to call a timeout. Think about it. Albright will take a timeout here with 7-17 to play in the first half. Fourth and short, the way it appears right now. Albright trailing like homing, 7-0. This week on Life Today, best-selling author Max Lucado helps us identify our own unique gifts and strengths so we can live in our sweet spot. Because if you spend all your life 
focused on your weaknesses, then you have mediocre. Push backward initially. He does not get a good spot, but I think it will be enough for a first down, and it is. The second effort from John Port gets it done, but the Lions trying to attack the middle of the front four for Lycoming, and Port on the second effort gets pushed backwards initially. Great surge by Lycoming defensively, and the Warriors are playing a little bit short. Dave Van Nort, their outstanding defensive tackle, 6'5", 260-pound junior, missing right now. He has 10 tackles for a loss out of his 48 tackles in the season. He is a force to be reckoned with, but right now he is a missing ingredient for Lycoming defensively, and the Lions so far in his drive have been attacking where Dave Van Nort normally reigns as a defensive tackle. Well, Tim Harding, the defensive end, able to get in there and sack John Port for a loss of two on the play. It'll be second down and 12. 20, make it the 15th sack of the year for Lycoming, 18th time Port has been sacked. Handles a tough snap, gives to Andrews. Andrews gets four to the 38 yard line. It's third down and eight for the Lions with 6.23 to play in the first half. And they continue to use that draw to their advantage in this drive. The late handoff, if you want to call it that, with Andrews and with the spread offense that Albright runs, you're going to open things up in the middle of the field and where you're going to run more often than not is up the middle. Twin receivers each way. Port looking for somebody to get open. Throws high and hard for how Would have been enough for a first down, but it's incomplete. Fourth down and eight. And you give the offensive line credit because Port had a lot of time to throw the football, but the hookup right now between Port and Hout is just not working as Port may have thrown this with a little bit too much mustard and a little bit too high, but that's a catchable football. Hout should have caught that football. May not have picked up the first down, but it certainly would have put them close enough that they may have been able to go for it on fourth down. Instead, they'll have to punt. And Nick Craypill sometimes will roll out after getting the snap and has the option to run or kick. Matt Murdoch is back deep at his own 12-yard line. Craypill just kicking this one high down the middle of the field. Albright had a chance, did not find the football, and it goes into the end zone for a touchback. Josh Madkins was there, but he didn't see the ball, and he had a chance to down that one inside the 10-yard line. His best bet would have been almost to catch it in midair, because once that thing hit, it hit, does not have the spin on it that you'd like to, to hit and kind of drop dead. And instead, it bounces right into the end zone, so the Warriors at, least at this point in time dodge a bullet. First and 10, Lycoming at the 20-yard line. 5.52 to play in the first half. Elsewhere in the back today, Wilkes and Susquehanna tied at seven. FDU, Florham, and Kings are scoreless. Delaware Valley rolling along, beating Juniata by two touchdowns in the second quarter. And Moravian leads Lebanon Valley 7-0 early in that one. Glenn Smith with a short drop, and he'll throw for Ebert complete. Very short game as Josh Benson able to react quickly. Pick up of two, maybe three on the play. It's second down for the Warriors. Well, the secondary for the Lions has certainly come to play in this game. And the, it, Benson and Johnson, number one is Benson, and number 39 is Johnson. And they both had a hand in this football game, to say the least. Johnson with interception, Benson with a number of tackles, and right there to wrap up Ebert after a two-yard pickup. Backs will be in the eye, and for the first time at tailback, it is Brandon Trout for Lycoming. Their leading rusher will get the carry here off the left side, and say hello to Pete Minotti. 35 hits 35 as Minotti has just been everywhere in this football game. Shoots the gap. That's what a good middle linebacker is going to do on a running play. Read it and then shoot the gap and make the hit. And watch Minotti, 35, he's going to come out of the right-hand side of your picture right there. Before Trout can even think about turning the corner, Minotti's there to wrap him up. Here's a great shot of it. Watch Minotti. I see where it's going, and I am there to bring you down at right at the line of scrimmage. Call it a gain of a yard on the play to the 23. It's third down and seven. Trips to the right in the shotgun for the Warriors. Smith setting up the screen, throwing for Lackey. Lackey has blockers, and he has the first down across the 30 to the 35-yard line. Well designed, well executed for a pickup of 12. Now Chris Knight, number 78, the left guard for the Warriors, is the guy that springs Lackey because John Pond was there to potentially make a tackle on Lackey, but the blocking of Knipe makes sure that Lackey gets the first down. Smith's just gonna dump it off, and there's 78 
Knipe wrapping up John Pond and making sure that he can't make the tackle one-on-one, -on -one. and Lackey picks up the first down for Lycoming. 13th reception of the year for the freshman. First and 10 Warriors at their own 35-yard line. 4.25 to play before halftime. They lead 7-0. Play action. Smith over the middle. Wide open is Margadich, his tight end, bouncing into Albright territory down to the 42-yard line. He will pick up 23 on the play and another first down for the Warriors. Well, a great job by the Warriors to go to a weapon that they had not gone to, gone to before. And the play action fake helps seal the deal for Glenn Smith. And he just patiently waits. And there's Margetich all alone. Margetich makes the catch and then breaks a couple of tackles. Gets away from Chris for one. Gets away from Benson for another. Still on his feet. And then finally brought down in Albright territory down at the Lion 42-yard line. Just the second catch of the year for the sophomore from Interboro, and Glenn Smith, despite the two interceptions, having a pretty good drive here as Lycoming tries to increase the lead. Here is Trout. Trout gets two to the 40. It'll be second and eight, under four minutes to play in the first half. Trout giving Lackey a little bit of a breather. Lackey, who has had a busy first half so far, running and catching the football. Trow so far finding the road a little bit difficult to run through. We'll see this one from behind the Lion defense and a great job of plugging it up. And guess who? It's Minotti again doing the job and fending off a tackle and bringing him down after a two yard pickup. Frank Girardi, if his team can finish the season with a five game winning streak, they've won three in a row coming in, will get to a milestone in victories. 250, if they can do that. Sadiq coming on the blitz has picked up Smith's throw for Trow is incomplete. Right at the 40-yard line, John Pond with coverage. It'll be third down and eight for the Warriors. In a big spot right now for the lying defense and for that matter for Lycoming's offense to try to get something here. Because if you can stop them here, if you're the Lion defense, then you're forcing a punting situation. If Lycoming can pick up a first down here, they're knocking on the door for more points before halftime. Lycoming has not been great picking up third downs through the first eight games, 35%. But we showed you earlier they have been very efficient so far today. All right, bringing Minotti late, delayed blitz. Smith throwing, and it is caught inside the 20 yard line by Tim Brown in heavy traffic. He gets to the 17. They convert again with a pickup of 23. Great catch in traffic by Tim Brown. There he is, number 80 coming out of the slot, just running a simple little out pattern and a blown coverage that time by the Lion defense as Brown finds an open spot and a great catch in traffic as Johnson knocks him off his feet after he made the catch inside the 20 down to the 17 yard line. Very fab catch by the senior from Liverpool, New York. First time a guy named Tim Brown has made a catch in traffic. <laughs> For the Raiders, Tim Brown, a future Hall of Famer, made a few for the Oakland Raiders. Stuck three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Steve Butler, the leading tackler for Albright, the first one to get there. Loss of three. It's second down and 13. Fine play by the senior from Wilkes-Barre. So they're shutting down the running game for the most part, but suddenly Glenn Smith and the passing game of Lycoming has found a new life, as Steve Butler does what he has done so often over the course of this season, and that's smelling the run and wrapping up the run. Steve Butler, who has led this team in tackles from game number one, has continued to get the job done here this afternoon. It's an offense that averages under 200 yards a game passing, but it's been very good today. Here is Smith. When I found out my son was on drugs, it was total disbelief. I said, oh, Mark, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying? She said, because I'm watching you die, and I don't know what to do about it. It's a nightmare that you never wake up from. I wanted to have my family back, and that's when my mother found Narconon. If you or someone you love has a drug or alcohol problem, call Narconon today at 1-800-468-6933. A minute 44 to play in the first half. Lycoming leading at 7-0, and the Warriors with a third down and six, just shy of the Albright 13-yard line. Empty backfield as Lackey goes in motion. Smith to work out of the shotgun. Albright jumps. Free play. Beisel with the catch. Beisel 
with a first and goal at the two yard line. Wipe out the offsides penalty. The encroachment penalty will be declined and instead it'll be a first down pickup. For Albright defensively, the good news is you've got them in a third down situation. The bad news is you've got them in a third down situation as Lycoming continues to get the job done on third down. That time, Faisal finding a wide open spot in the middle of the field to make the catch and nearly scored on it. As Albright were able to wrap him up at about the All sides, three yard line. number 98 of the defense. Penalties declined. We got a first down. A first end goal with a minute 38 left. Left side of the screen. Lions clearly jumping offside. Jeremy Matazzo, the senior, whistled for the infraction that is declined by the Warriors. How about the resiliency of Glenn Smith, the quarterback for Lycoming? Two for seven in his first seven attempts and with two interceptions. Since then, he's gone six for nine, excuse me, seven for nine, throwing the football and has his team knocking on the door for another score. Handoff is to Mangold, straight ahead. Albright able to answer, no gain on the play. John Pond at the top of the pile, Pete Minotti at the bottom, second and goal with just over a minute left in the half. Lions defense has risen to the challenge over the course of the last quarter and a half, but they have really got a challenge ahead of them right now to somehow or another keep Lycoming off the scoreboard or at least force them to settle for a field goal. Muhammad mm -hmm. Sadiq coming up to make the tackle on that play, stuffing Mangold after a one-yard pickup. Kicker Mike Manastra just one for three in field goals, and it's a 19-yarder. Here is Lackey, toss sweep to the left, Albright able to meet that play at the point of attack. No gain again, third and goal at the two, and Lycoming will take a timeout with 30 seconds left in the first half. Terrific pursuit to the football by the Lion defense. It is gonna come right into your living room right now. Here comes Lackey trying to turn the corner. Butler stops him and prevents it from happening. Great job by Steve Butler to get up there and slow down the pursuit and wait for everybody else in red and white defensively to come up and make the hit, including John Pond to help finish it off. But it was Butler with containment who did not allow Lackey to turn the corner. Lackey wants to use his speed to get the corner and to get the pylon, and Pond said no, you're, or excuse me, Butler said no, you're not gonna get it. Minotti and Pond come up to finish him off. One timeout remaining for Lycoming. It is a third and goal at the two. What do you think of play action here or letting Smith have the option of the runner of the pass by rolling out? Well, you certainly have to think about that because Smith has had some great daylight to run through with that play action fake and getting the Lions to go one way and then going the other way. He scored on it and he's got his team inside the 15 yard line thanks to it. Now they're down inside the two, inside the five, excuse me, at the two. And there's an awful lot of world possibilities, but the toss sweep right now, the Lion defense seems to have done a pretty good job of it. See if maybe they don't try to spread them out. Oh, nope, they're not. They're gonna pack it in tight and go with split backs in the backfield. And one receiver. Albright making the defensive call as Lycoming breaks the huddle. Here is the rollout by Smith, looking to the end zone, touchdown. He finds his tight end, Bill Margetic, his second catch of the day, his first touchdown of the season. Good call, safe play, a lot of things you can do. The Lions got good penetration on Glenn Smith, but he was patient enough to wait for Margetic to get free, and the tight end makes the catch for the score. For Smith, only his seventh touchdown throw of the season, as he hobbles off the field, his team up by two scores. Manastra to attempt the point after. Matt Murdoch is the holder. 25 seconds left in the first half. Kick did not have much to it, but it gets just over the crossbar, and Lycoming now leads it 14-0. Terrific job by Glenn Smith as he rolls out and has a lot of people chasing him. You're gonna see at least three Lions. There's Roland leading the charge, and he just waits for Margetic to get free. It's, it's gonna take time. Margetic is lined up tight end right, gives a little touch block on Roland, and then swings into the end zone for an open spot. And he gets away from Matt Chris, the free safety, before he can recover in time, and makes the catch for the touchdown. So 25 seconds left here in the half. Albright trailing it 14-0 as the 